when I was a kid, I used to think that there was, the, there was shoes that you could buy that would make you run faster and jump higher. The PF Flyers. But then you, only, then you realize that there are no shoes that make you run faster. But wait, 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 wait. There actually are shoes that make you run faster. They are the Nike Vaporflies. So much so that, that they were banned recently from the New York City Marathon. The Kenyan runner Eliud Kipajay ran a marathon under two hours for the first time in history. The top, they, they realized the top fa- fastest men's marathon times were all ran with Nike Vaporflies. And they did some research and they realized that these shoes, they actually make you run 4% faster than everybody else. And so they banned these shoes. In a culture that's constantly inventing new ways to go faster, Our third hidden habit is to remove your running shoes. Luke chapter 10 tells us a story about several people that were in a hurry. It's the story of the Good Samaritan. Many of you have heard it. Man gets beat up on the side of the road, left for dead. Uh, he's, He's needing help. He's crying out for help. A priest sees him, the guy you would expect to help, and he passes by on the other side. A Levite sees him, and he passes by on the other side. Because these guys were in too much of a hurry to help the guy that was in a ditch. And then the very next story, right after that, the very next verse, tells a story about Jesus going to to the house of these two women. And let me read to you what it says here in Luke chapter 10. As Jesus and his disciples continued on their way to Jerusalem, they came to a certain village where a woman named Martha welcomed him into her home. Her sister Mary sat at the Lord's feet, listening to what he taught. But Martha was distracted by the big dinner she was preparing. She came to Jesus and said, Lord, doesn't it seem unfair to you that my sister just sits there while I do all the work? Tell her to come and help me. But the Lord said to her, my dear Martha, you are worried and upset about all these details. There is only one thing worth being concerned about, and Mary has discovered it, and it will not be taken away from her. The one thing that Mary chose was slowly sitting before Jesus, unhurriedly listening. I I think it's often unappreciated how much Jesus walked everywhere. He walked estimated 21,500 miles in his life. That's almost all the way around the world at the equator. The average walking speed is three miles per hour. And so uh, I don't think it's too much of a stretch to say that three miles per hour is the speed of God. The Bible never says, run with God. It only ever says, walk with God. But we're so busy and we're so addicted to this hurried and frenetic lifestyle that a lot of times we need to slow down and keep pace with our three-mile-per-hour God. I, in the early 1900s, the, it was all the craze. Everybody wanted to get to the South Pole. And so th- there was a, a true story of two expeditions that set out On a journey to the South Pole, they had two different strategies. The first expedition said, you know what? On the days where the weather's really good, we're going to march extra. We're going to go 30 miles, 40 miles, 50 miles. And then on the days where the weather's bad, we're just going to set up camp and rest and recharge. And then when the weather gets clear again, then we'll set out and march. And the, the second group decided to not march any extra when the weather was nice. And they decided to not rest when the weather was, was bad. Um, but instead, they decided that they were going to march 20 miles every single day, no matter whether w- w- the weather was good or the weather was bad. Which of those groups do you think made it to the South Pole? Were they English or Norwegian? <laughs> it's the second group. That's right. Somebody said the first group. You may think it's the first, but it's actually the second group. The group that that marched 20 miles every single day, they made it to the South Pole and back. You know what happened to the first group? Everyone died. Slowing down literally saved the lives of the people in this second group. And, you know, it's the same in scuba diving. I have a friend who's a scuba diver, and he says that you can't come up quick. I didn't know this, but it's common sense if you think about it, but your body pressure, you have to let your body pressurize the deeper you get, and then if if you swim up too quick, you'll die. D. 
Do you want to always be in a hurry in your life, rushing around to everything? Or do you want to move slowly and be able to be present to people around you and be able to see people in need like the, that guy in the ditch that was passed by on that Samaritan, on that road to, uh, between Jericho and Jerusalem? If you want to do that, then you need to remove your running shoes and walk with Jesus. And so uh, removing your running shoes as a parent may mean just putting your phone away and engaging with your kids. Removing your running shoes as a boss might mean hiring slowly, taking your time with candidates for a position uh, in order to, to really vet them and see who they are and see if they're a fit on the team. Removing your running shoes with a friend might mean putting your phone away whenever you're with them. Removing your running shoes as a married person may mean going on a walk with your wife or your husband once a day just to slow down and talk and engage. Remove, remove your running shoes when talking to your parents on the phone. Remove your running shoes with, when playing with your toddlers. When you're making a big purchase, slow down. When you're trying to choose a spouse and you're a single person, take off your running shoes. Slow down. When you're rushing through your daily Bible reading because it's a checklist and there's this annual reading thing that I have to get through, slow down and meditate on the truths that you're reading. Let yourself be interrupted. By people, I, I, I heard somebody say that if Jesus, if Jesus did not had not without interruptions, he would not even have a ministry. All the amazing things Jesus did were because of people that interrupted him, and he was just ready to be interrupted. I, I love that. Get into the habit of going slow in a world that's constantly trying to go fast. One of my favorite places in the country is Monument Valley. Anybody ever been there? It's a desolate stretch of highway between Utah and Arizona, and it's one of the most beautiful sceneries you, you can imagine. There's these beautiful rock formations there, but the reason it's my favorite place is not just because it's beautiful, but because it's the place that Forrest Gump stopped running. Remember that? And there's all these people following him. He's run all the way across the United States of America multiple times. He's got a huge beard. There's this huge group of people following him, and he just stops, <laughs> and all these people stop, and they're like, well, we, we gave up our lives to follow you. And he's like, I just didn't feel like running anymore. <laughs> you know? Every day before you leave your house, remove your running shoes.